So now after nearly 20 years searching Britain's most haunted locations, she's proved herself as the ghost hunting queen. But now Yvette Fielding has started telling spooky stories of her own. Well, she's here now to tell us about her love of all things paranormal as uh, it's led to a, a brand new series of children's books. And it's lovely to see you. Oh, it's so um, lovely so nice to be here. So you, you've this written children's books before. Yes. But this is the first time. This is a, this is a series. Mm -hmm. And so we are introduced to our... I read, when I read the, the sort of synopsis... It's the story of three friends, Clovis, Eve and Tom, who decided to play with a Ouija board in an abandoned house on Halloween. No, thank what the you. hell are they playing at? I don't know. Who would do such a stupid thing? <laughs> yeah, I thought, you know, uh, teenagers, and I, I sort of did a lot of research, and um, basically we do this thing called Most Haunted Events, so anybody that watches the show and goes, oh, this is a load of rubbish, it's all fake... We started out saying, well, actually, come and see for yourself that it isn't. And we're the only um, paranormal show, TV show, to have something running mm. like that with it, within, you know, conjunction with it. And so um, we did under-16 events as well, and they sold out. And so I got to meet lots and lots of teenagers, and they said, why don't you write a book? We'd love you to write a book. And I said, yeah, but how scary do you want it to be? A lot of the stuff that we've experienced is actually very frightening. Put it in, put it in. So I did. Yeah, and you have to be quite careful if you're doing a, one of these experience things and you've got under 16s, so you scare the living daylights out of them, well, damage them forever. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you, on, obviously, we have parents come with us and, you know, they have to give their permission and so on. And we always choose locations that don't have any malevolent beings there. You know, it's always, you know, the white lady or the, the man in the suit of armour, so it's, it's nothing horrible or horrendous. Really? It sounds pretty horrible and horrendous <laughs> to me. Um, a lot of the, the sort of stories from the book, sort of the moments that happen are based on experiences that you've had yourself. Yes, absolutely. And that's one of the things that really excited me was the fact that I could use my own experiences and give them to Eve, Tom and Clovis to experience. So I've brought along today. So, for instance, this happens to Eve in the book, but it actually happens to me. Um, I was investigating live on air um, RAF Raynham and were in the dark, completely pitch black, and I felt something hit the back of back of me and then I felt something whiz past my head and you hear these sort of items clattering to the floor and you get the torch and what the heck was that you know after screaming for about five minutes as I do and we found lots of these um do you want to have a look I don't want to touch okay. it okay I don't want to touch it in case something comes out of it you and are so funny to haunt me because every time I come on this show you <laughs> <laughs> You have a look on your face, you look at me like this, like you're chewing you know lemons. What? I've got a lot better. <laughs> I have got a lot better. Like, I think I, I can listen and hear the stories about it now, but there's still something in me that goes, if I touch that, whatever haunted that thing might come out and start haunting me. What, what are the haunted pennies? So these are um, pennies. So these are things called a port. So A port? A port. So they're when an item might be in a different part of the building and all of a sudden it's poltergeist activity, it will arrive or be thrown or dropped in front of Why you. Why are they doing that? Just to show that they're, they're here. Nobody no. really... There's no experts in the paranormal. The only 18, people... That 1874, are, yes, they're old. We were showered. Me, myself and the whole crew were showered from the ceiling with loads of Pennies these coins. Pennies from heaven. Pennies from heaven. And the weird thing is, we did a bit of research, is when this happens in paranormal activity, if the pennies land face up, it's good, and if they land on the other side, it's bad. Well, all the pennies were all face up. And our sceptic on the show, he was doing another experience, and he was walking past a vending machine, and he heard this clatter, and one of those old pennies dropped. So everywhere we went for a period of about three happening. months, all these pennies just kept showing up. Even in my own house, I was walking up the stairs, and one of those was in the centre of the stairs. Pulled the du duvet back, and there it was in the bed. No, stop. And I, that, I did a you. Because I, I, I was completely on my own, and I thought, what's going on? Yeah, but do you not think that, because, like, once you start, like, messing with this stuff, it starts following you about? Well, yes, that was my big thing. I actually resigned from the show once, and it was um, uh, in the second book that I write about, this is where it starts to get Lot darker. A bit darker, yeah. And it was the first time that um, three members of the team actually got hurt badly and we were broadcasting live across to America on Discovery Channel and live across the UK and one of the crew members, Stuart, is stood in front of the camera. He's got a black leather jacket on and a white t-shirt underneath and he's screaming, ah, my back's burning, my back's burning. It was in a location in Edinburgh in Nidra Street Vaults. 
And I pull his leather jacket off and you can see the blood coming through his T-shirt. Is this in the circle where they said don't yes, stand in that circle? don't stand in the circle and don't disrespect. It's supposed to be where witches, uh, you know, they held a coven and did all sorts of very negative things. And people that go there on tours, member of the public, have actually been reported at, at having scratches. Um, Carl then got scratches on the back of his neck and the sound guy had to go to hospital because there was a cut from just underneath his knee down to the top of his ankle and you could see the bone and he had to have stitches. Stop. And, and so these experiences are all real. And again, that's why I invite you can choose all sorts of locations around the UK. If you don't, you know, if, you, if you're a little bit sceptical or, you know, I need to see who's believing, yeah. then come and join me in the team. See for yourself. You, you, know. were, you did Blue Peace, right, oh. in this studio. I don't did. ask the yes. question you are about to ask. I'm gonna. Do you feel anything in here? I definitely do. No, you don't. I definitely do. What do you feel? I definitely do feel. I feel that there's something beside you now. No, that, a silver fox. Apart from that. No, there's not. There's not. Is someone behind the sofa? And when you brush your teeth like... tonight, Holly, don't look in the mirror. <laughs> You're such a. <laughs> you are such a. <laughs> you love it. You we've love always it. Said, we've always said there's a chill at that table. Yeah, there is. There is. That table definitely has a chill. And the weird thing is, when that, stu when that table was in the old studio, it also had a chill. So it's maybe it's just a cold table. Maybe, or maybe, cold or table. maybe you should just shut your legs a bit, Philip. Is that what it is? <laughs> it's probably a nice cold, cold breeze. Cold chill. <laughs> and a bit of dust. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> there you go, you see. Oh, oh, man. Listen, this is the book that we're talking about, The House in the Woods. It will terrify your teenagers, but they love it. Um, thank you so You've much. You've written the second thank one. When, when will we... At this time next year. This time next it year. gets darker and the, the, uh, the title at the moment is called Whitechapel, so I wonder who the ghost could wow. be. Wow. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'll be sending you. No, coffee. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. No, thank you. No, no.